Welcome to my talk. Don't eat shit and die. Tips from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Really, it should be called Don't Die and Eat Shit, but that didn't have quite the same ring to it. The Egyptian Book of the Dead, also known as the Book of Going Forth by Day, is one of the most sensuous funerary texts ever written. A skeleton key for navigating the afterlife, it's inspired everyone from James Joyce to Sigmund Freud. It contains some of the most beautiful prose ever written. But there's a curiously recurring taboo that appears in the text. It contains lots and lots of spells, protecting you from never ever, under any circumstance, for any reason, eating shit. <laughs> this comes up over and over again in the Book of the Dead. Like, there's a spell to prevent you from eating shit while on a boat. There's a spell to prevent you from eating shit while you're hanging upside down. <laughs> Unpacking this fixation is what this talk is all about. The story of how we came to possess the Book of the Dead is one of theft. It's a tale that involves ship sabotage, donkey sabotage, underground tunnels, and a bitter rivalry between two Egyptologists representing two colonial powers. <laughs> this is Eugène Crebeau. In 1886, he was appointed as the director of the Supreme Council of Antiquities. His job was making sure that no relics were illegally smuggled out of Egypt, and he sucked at his job. <laughs> the local people disliked him because he interfered with their business ventures of peddling antiquities. And his employers hated him because the items he confiscated frequently were stolen from him days later, sometimes hours <laughs> later. By the way, I chose this picture of him because it aptly illustrates the whole vibe of the time we're talking about here. A time of white men conducting literal cultural appropriation while relegating people of color and women to the sidelines. Boo! This is Graybo's arch nemesis, Sir Ernest Alfred Thompson Wallace Budge. Speaker at the Ghost Club, aforementioned at the previous Odd Salon, a cult. By way of introducing him, I'd like to share a quote from one of his contemporaries. Perhaps the most outstanding example of incompetence in the whole range of British official scholarship. But, you know, guys, more than a century has gone by since this judgment was passed, and I think it's only fair that we look at him through a more contemporary lens for full context. So here's Dar Dr. Barbara Mertz writing about Budge. A poor archaeologist and an unscrupulous plunderer of Egypt. Budge? Budge loved it. In his autobiography, he boasts, as for my being a rogue and a swindler and a lawbreaker, the locals would rather have dealings with such than with a fool. Yeah, he always called them like the locals, the natives. It was a little condescending. The natives came to me in boats by night and offered to sell me statues and slabs and many more of the things I was anxious to acquire. I told them that I had no money and they pressed me to take their things to England and send them the money. So that's what kind of guy he was. In 1887, Budge heard of a treasure in Luxor. He traveled by land to seize the opportunity, while Graybo pursued him by ship. Yes. Things did not go well for Graybo. His steamer got stuck on a sandbank 12 miles away from Luxor. Some sus suspected Budge of sabotage. Graybo's only option was to rent a donkey, but no donkeys could be found, for the local villagers heard that he was coming and had driven all of their donkeys into the, the neighboring village so that he could not hire them. 
While this was happening, Budge finds his treasure, a 78-foot scroll called the Papyrus of Ani. It's the most complete book of the dead that we have today, custom written and illustrated for Ani, a scribe to the pharaoh. It cost Ani half a year's salary, and for that money, the scroll contained 189 spells, nine of which guard Ani against eating shit. <laughs> but more on that later. Budge is soon arrested by Graybo's officers, and the scroll is locked away in a government storeroom. Budge's associate, dealer Mohammed Muhasib, narrowly avoids jail time for himself and Budge and hatches a brilliant plan. Muhasib convinces the manager of the Luxor Hotel, which shares a wall with the building where the scroll is being kept, to let them dig a tunnel under the wall into the basement containing the scroll. While this is happening, they distract the guards with a meal of boiled sheep, sliced lemons, raisins, and rice drenched in mutton fat, and they steal the scroll back. Budge smuggles it to England, where it ends up in the British Museum, and Graybo is soon forced to resign. So let's talk about what's in the scroll. Ancient Egyptians saw the afterlife as a confusing, bewildering, punishingly difficult experience full of demons and tribulations. Think of the Egyptian afterlife. <laughs> Think of it as a really hard to beat Nintendo game. <laughs> and think of the Book of the Dead as the pay by minute Nintendo power line. <laughs> Only the more rich could afford it. It made gameplay so much more fun. And um, it was just better in every way. The spells on the book were strategy guides and cheat codes designed to help you dodge monsters, gain superpowers, discover lost levels, and gain extra lives. For example, spell number six lets you generate little clones of yourself to help you with manual labor. <laughs> spell 34 helps you to drive off four crocodiles that may come to take away your magic. Spell 117 is for taking only the best roads. Spell 111 prevents you from dying again in the afterlife. <laughs> and my favorite, spell 64, condenses all of the other spells in the book into a single spell. So it's kind of a neat indexing hack. And the spells to guard against eating shit. Let's consult the source material. I know that this is what you've all been waiting for. The following spells, the following spells come from three different translations, none of which are by E.A. Wallace Budge, for his translation was so bad that even Stargate mocks it. Spell number 52, not to eat excrement in the realms of the dead. My abomination, my abomination, I will not eat my abomination. My abomination is excrement, I do not eat it. I will not touch it with my hands, I will not walk on it with my feet. Here's another translation. This one is called a uh, chapter for not eating feces or drinking urine in God's domain. <laughs> I detest what is detestable. I will not eat feces. I will not drink urine. I will not walk head downward. <laughs> I am the owner of bread in Heliopolis. Bread of mine is in the sky with Ray. Bread of mine is on the earth with Geb. And it, is a, and it is the night bark and the day bark which bring it to me from the house of the great God who is in Heliopolis. A bark is a type of ship, by the way. I am loosened from my windings. I make ready the ferry boat of the sky. I eat of what they eat. I live on what they live on. I have eaten bread in every pleasant room. And here's another one called, um, oh wait, hold on. Uh, spell for not going upside down while eating dung, so. <laughs> My abomination is my abomination. I do not eat my abomination. Dung is my abomination. I will not eat it. Dung is the abomination of my spirit. It shall not enter my belly. I will not touch it with my hands. I will not step on it with the soles of my feet. 
The concept <laughs> appears in surprising contexts across various books of the dead. Here's spell number 116. This spell is called another spell for knowing the souls of Hermopolis. And it has nothing to do with eating shit. Yet the disclaimer at the bottom reads, as for one who knows this spell, dung is his abomination and he drinks not urine. <laughs> Just, you know, in case anyone was concerned. But why? Why such a heavy emphasis on eating shit? I have a theory. The medicine of ancient Egypt was highly advanced for its time. But this was also a time when most remedies were not, shall we say, rigorously vetted through scientific means. Science! The Ebers Medical Papyrus, for example, contains the following list of drugs. Lizard's blood, swine's teeth, moisture from pig's ears, goose grease, asses' hooves, and yes, feces, both animal and human. The Cahoon Gynecological, Gynecological Papyrus recommends using, birth, uh, using crocodile as birth control. And yes, you had to put it up your vag. The Edwin Smith Surgical Papyrus recommends dung for dressing wounds. And you know, you're all acting grossed out, but guess what? In some cases, this might have actually been a good idea. Dung does have anti-inflammatory properties at times. Medicine often mixed with magic during this time period. The Demotic Magical Papyrus of London, for example, recommends that men put dung on their penis to make their companion fall deeper in love with them. So, gentlemen, I hope you're taking notes. My theory, my theory is that at some point, certain people working in medicine and magic figured out that engaging with dung is probably a bad idea from a public health perspective. In those days, the best way to keep people safe was to codify an unsafe practice as a religious taboo. This is why I think the Book of the Dead presents eating shit as one of the worst things that can possibly happen to you. Not much has changed since ancient times. We still occasionally use feces in human medicine, like these $700 frozen poop pills, which appeared on the market a couple of years ago. And eating dung remains an unspeakable taboo. <laughs> and so that brings me to my last point. What would be a good recontextualization of these spells for our modern times? The answer came to me as I was memorizing these spells for this talk. In the process of memorizing the spells, without consciously trying to, I started reciting them sincerely as actual prayers. In my mind, eating shit took on that most common current usage. It's a fear of getting doored while riding a bike in traffic, the fear of embarrassing oneself on stage while giving a public talk. <laughs> Just before I got up here, I closed my eyes and I said to myself, dung is my abomination and I will not eat it. I, I, I think it might have worked. In the most general sense, I think that I think that the phrase, I don't give a shit, is a very powerful spell, one that served me well. So I'd like to propose a toast. May dung be your abomination. May you never eat shit in this life or the next, whatever that means to you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah.